All right, they're already. You can hear our Jew boss is back and laughing already. <laughs> I'm so excited he's here. Josh Potter here doing up the Josh Potter show once again, as we do every Tuesday here at your mom's house. Got to mention the merch up at the merch store, store.ymhstudios.com. The shirts are going quickly. Sussel merch is available for you. So is this guy that I'm wearing right here. Can you see it? Ooh, beautiful. Yes, we've got. Some of the sizes already that have been restocked are sold out of this, guys. So you got to get on them quick. Again, store.ymhstudios.com. I also want to mention I'm going to be at the West Palm Improv. That's happening March 21st. Tickets are on sale for that show. It is so far my only show uh, at all for 2021. So let's make this one a banger just in case they don't book me for any other ones for the rest of the year. I would like to get booked for more. So, uh... Yeah, come on out. Sold a bunch of tickets already. I hope uh, we can sell the last few. So go to my Twitter, at J underscore Potter, or you can go to my Instagram, at Josh underscore Potter, or just the West West Palm Beach Improv's uh, website there and buy some some tickets. People mentioned last week they missed the sound of the woman crying in the beginning, so I'm going to give it to them. (laughs) There she is, folks. And uh, we have a special guest today who I'm going to s- introduce right now. She uh, she opens up for Christina P., if you've seen her out on the road at all. And uh, she does all kinds of wonderful show business. I mean, you are like a renaissance woman. It's oh. Chase O'Donnell, everybody. Hello. I'm also the voice of the crying woman. <laughs> so it's such a pleasure to be here. I wish. Can we make? Can we have a special Chase O'Donnell crying woman? I mean, it'll be easy. I'll just <laughs> record just go myself home? tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I am very, very happy to be here. I just want to say thank you for having me. Anytime. And such a fan of yours. And uh, hello. I'm a fan of yours. <laughs> Do you have anything that you want to promote anywhere you're going to be? Maybe with Christina or alone? Yeah. Um, I In, I guess, March. That's coming right up. Yeah, yeah, Around yeah. the corner. March 11th through 13th, I'll be in Nashville at Zany's with Christina. So that'll be fun. Just was there. Wonderful. Oh. Wonderful club. You're going to have a great time. It's a wonderful club. Yes, I'm very excited. And other than that, you can check me out on the old Instagram. And yeah, what's your Instagram? Plug it up. A, okay, it's Chase <laughs> Chase underscore O'Donnell, and that's my name. Perfect. Yeah. And that's her name, indeed. Now, go. I don't know if people know at home that don't know you necessarily, but you were like born, bred, and raised as like a singer, dancer. I mean, like <laughs> it's almost like a military child. Yeah, well, my mom was a dance teacher my whole life growing up, and my dad was also in the business, like a cartoon guy, directed Ooh. lots of cartoons. So, uh, yeah, just grew up dancing, and then like I saw Disney Channel High School Musical, and that's why you know I had to get into singing lessons. Well, I'm curious. Do you see these <laughs> women like Sabrina Carpenter mm. and these others that are having problems, and you're over here like, hey, Walt, Mickey? Uh, way to blow it and not pick up old Chase over here. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's been a thing since like, you know, all the Disney Channel stars kind yeah, they of all have kind of, problems. Yeah, right? and, you're, and you're over here problem free. Yeah, like, thank God I wasn't on Disney. <laughs> <laughs> you think blessing. that's you think it's the, the cause to the effect as opposed to the other way around? They just picked bad apples? No, yeah, I think I think they turn bad. So you think if you went to Disney... And you were like, I'd be Chase a mess on the right High now. School Musical Four. You would be like, up. You'd be doing blow and yeah. All kinds of I'd stuff. be a drug addict right now. <laughs> I believe it or not, I believe that. And I don't know if you saw Framing Britney or the Britney Spears documentary. Where is it? Hulu. I looked on Hulu. Maybe HBO. No, it's Hulu. You're right, but. I looked on there and I can't find this freaking thing. I think they're trying oh. to suppress it. Okay, well you gotta find it. <laughs> yeah. Point being, Britney was normal. And then she turned crazy. Mickey Mouse Club. Yeah, she was great. All those people on the Mickey Mouse Club, the most normal one, I guess, would be what? Ryan Gosling? And Justin Timberlake. Yeah, but he's now he's problematic. You Justin, heard? you're canceled, bro. He's canceled. You're not bringing sexy back. You're not bringing nothing back. You are over. Yeah. Game over. Return to base. 
<laughs> and uh, we're halfway through the nice boy clock. I knew you'd have no problem with oh, the nice boy no, clock. Oh, no, I think we could keep the nice boy you, clock going. I mean, with I Chase prefer. here, it's a nice, <laughs> nice boy hour. I mean, we could do the whole thing. Last week, I exploded the nice boy clock within like four seconds. Did you? But yeah. they beep it out. I don't know that they did on this one. <laughs> not, on, not on this one. There's a little no. too much to bleep out this time. We just basically told YouTube, uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a non-monetized episode. Let's just put it that <laughs> way. But uh, I knew you'd have no problem with that. I wanted to ask you, mm-hmm. because I know also, I've been talking to you know, people here and there throughout this quarantine, how their lives have been affected and things like that. You and I, we used to hang out like after shows. And we'd go to but we'd go to islands, islands after flappers. And oh my he god, has joined. And he's been there. Yes, <laughs> Chase introduced us to a new drink: hot water and tequila. Hot. It's called a hot toddy. Well, yes, I've had a hot toddy before, oh, but never oh. with tequila. Oh right, I made it up. Yeah, you did, and okay. you invented it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it is yes a hot toddy. I think is that's what it is a hot toddy. What is hot toddies usually with? Not I didn't tequila. even know it was with hot water. I just knew it was like a hot alcoholic drink. I thought it I, was. We could do it with that whiskey. Like a Tom and Jerry is like a hot toddy, right? I don't know. But I have no idea either. I really don't know. But you were drinking hot water and tequila. Yes. <laughs> last time, which is hilarious. It was good, wasn't it? I mean, I had one and I was like, that's interesting. And then I just kept drinking beer. Oh. Uh, but, you know, it's not a matter of anything <laughs> like that. But I wanted to know because we've had conversations and things where like, uh, you have a tremendous amount of friends. Mm-hmm. I have none. <laughs> uh, but you're, it seems like you're always going to weddings and things like that. Did oh you notice God. without COVID, have you missed going to your friends' weddings? Um, so thank you for noticing. I have so many friends. It is an issue. <laughs> yeah. um, I have to start weeding them out. Yeah. Uh, it, I, it was such a blessing to have all those weddings canceled because <laughs> this is kind of like the year a lot of my friends were getting married and actually, I was going to have to miss a ton of them because of the Christina tour. Yeah. So I was actually not going to be going to a lot, but it kind of made me feel better that their weddings got canceled <laughs> anyway. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm missing them. Right. Because of another thing. It was just like, OK, everyone's missing it. I enjoyed the not having weddings. Of course. What a thrill. I mean, 2019, I every time I talk to you, you're like, I have to go to... Oh, Santa Clarita God. for a wedding or something Santa like that. Santa Clarita. I don't yeah. even know what that is, but yeah, I mean, someplace. <laughs> You're always like, I have to go here for a bachelorette party. Oh I have to my go God. Here for... Yeah. It was a like oppressive. A full time job. Time. Yeah, that's insane. So I wondered, yeah. you know, maybe that was kind of a benefit of COVID. I did talk about, I actually talked about this in my stand up that I went to a couple Zoom weddings. Oh my Lord. And those were lovely. They were And fun? I went to a Facebook Live. Did you get dressed up for them? No, no. Oh, you, you don't wear, have to? You wear sweatpants and they don't see you and it's it's really lovely. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. That must be what school is like in Zoom because I would just turn it on and then sleep. Yeah. Same oh, yeah. thing with a wedding. You know, I, I would be like, I think you uh-huh. have to have your camera on. In school or in the wedding? In school. They don't make you in the wedding? They're not like, prove well, that you're paying attention to these vows. The Facebook Live, I was doing a workout. I had my <laughs> camera off and was just like, so <laughs> well that's good i'm glad that you've experienced a little bit of relaxation on the wedding front yeah but it's gonna be nuts watch out this year yeah and you're gonna be obligated to go to all of them yeah because i'm coming out of this i'm going like i i'm realizing how few friends i have uh <laughs> and i have like my friends from back home or like high school or whatever but they're across the country Do you know what i mean like they don't live here yeah, that's so, that's a blessing. No, it sure it is, but yeah. it isn't during COVID sometimes, but it is right, right. in general. And I was de- dealing with it fine prior to COVID, but now I'm just sitting there banging my head against the wall. And I've, uh, well, I addressed it last week. I don't want to <laughs> get into it any longer. Uh, we're only about 57 seconds oh. away from the nice boy clock ending. And then Uh-oh. I'm going to call up Dr. Drew and ask him a question okay. regarding coronavirus, because I have a new sort of theory. I'm, it's just a, an inquiry, really. That I have for Dr. Drew in regards to that. I hope he picks up the phone. I don't know if he'll pick up the phone. I think he'll pick up for you. Do you think he'll pick up? I don't know. We'll see. He'll probably think it's some dire medical emergency. (laughs) He'll be like, are you dying? What's going on? Why would you be calling me? I can't wait to know what the question is. uh, I'm excited to to let you know it as well. And um, and then after that, we have to get into uh, what will lead to our queef of the week, which is the Bachelor scandal that's happening right now. Oh, my God. 
Yes, I'm I so excited. I can't believe I'm here for this talk. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna, you can educate me on it because I am, uh, I'm kind of, I've educated myself on it a little bit, but I'm, you know, not as knowledgeable on the show oh, as sure, you. Oh, sure, yeah. So uh, I'm excited to hear your takes. to talk about. Let's call up uh, Dr. Drew real quick here. Nice boy clock is officially over. It's expired. Okay. He's going to pick up. Can I say hi? Of course. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's not going to pick up. He's, he's probably live streaming. All right, sorry, I'm not available right now. Oh, leave a message. Oh, I should have. Oh. Damn it. I'm going to leave him a message. Okay. I'm going to leave him a message. Yeah, I need some, back, I need some he's payoff really for this bit. Think. I need some payoff for this bit. <laughs> I'm going to leave him a message. Okay. Josh? Oh, I'm sorry. Dr. Drew, you're on the Josh Potter show right now. Chase O'Donnell's here, and I just had a... A, a quick question about COVID. I was going to leave you a message and I accidentally... Hold on. Hold yes. on. I literally have to... Fin- Let me, can I call you right back? I'll of, be happy to answer. Of course. Yes, please. Call right back. Okay, okay good. Oh. He's going to hate that he wasted his time calling me back. That means he totally saw your call and didn't answer. And then he was like, oh, he's calling again. <laughs> I know. And then answer. <laughs> Josh. Ugh. What is it? <laughs> What's bleeding now? But I wonder how long that'll take for him to call back. Um, it's funny because when I was in Dallas with Christina, she just randomly would call Dr. Drew with COVID questions. Yeah. And I wonder, is this what, is this what everyone I call have it, him? I did have a COVID question for real um, back around Christmas time because my sister and my mother and my brother-in-law all got it at once on Christmas. Oh, what and a my day sister to was, get it. And my sister was pregnant or is pregnant. So I was like... Uh, <laughs> She hasn't had it yet or okay. anything. So, um, or lost it or whatever. I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> neither thing happened. Knock on the old table. Uh, anywho. <laughs> so I called because she couldn't get her, uh, gyno or whatever the fuck they're called. Oh shit. Did he just, call? <gasps> I heard some, I, I heard something. Oh no. Oh God. But anywho. Okay. You know, so I called him about that. Dr. Drew, yeah, sorry. Like, oh. I, I'm sorry. We were we were just uh, linking the conversation, you know, doing the show. But so yes, my we're gonna have, we're gonna have some hot COVID talk. Come on now. Yes. Uh, so um, this past weekend, I slept with a woman who was vaccinated. Does that mean I get to skip the first round or? <laughs> it means nothing. It means nothing. Not even fluid bonding can get you a little bit of the vaccine. Not even a, a minutia. No, nothing. No, not even a minutia. But you you did explain though that you can get COVID from fluid bonding, yeah? Uh, well, it's primarily transmitted through aerosols in in the respiratory system. It really is almost exclusively that way. So, but but the other question is, can you get COVID from somebody who's been vaccinated? And the answer to that is, we think you can, <gasps> because they still might be able to carry the virus. Well, then so, this is a bunch of false advertising. <laughs> So you you're definitely not going to get inoculated, but you might get the COVID. How about that? Ah, this doesn't sound like this vaccine's good working times. good. More importantly, did you uh, climax? Uh, eventually, you know the, the the usual way. You know, I handled it myself. <laughs> Damn. I know. I man. thought we I thought we were getting over that. You found a moment where that where you could. Uh, yeah. Well. This uh, this one was a little. I mean, you know, it's COVID, and my brain's elsewhere. But we're getting close. Your brain's not elsewhere when you're having sex. Be fair. You're still a man. I I, I got to tell you, Doctor Drew. Sometimes it goes places. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it places I don't want to know about? No, it's just sad places. <laughs> sad places. Yeah, yeah sometimes. Well, like- it, it does make you sad if you're worried about ejaculating, I guess. That's kind of sad. <laughs> it's very true, Dr. Drew, very true. But thank you for letting me know. I, I thought maybe I could forego the first round, you know, I thought after that. But I appreciate you letting no, me know. Now I'll, no. get vac- I'll, I'll, be, I'll be sure to still get vaccinated. Please. No problem. Thank you so much for taking right. time to help us out. Thank you, Dr. Drew. Big fan over here. Ch- that's Chase O'Donnell. Big fan. Hi, Big Chase. fan. Hi. <laughs> Bye. There you go. Oh, my God. Dr. Drew, that was so exciting. Isn't it so nice to yeah. know that Dr. Drew's so worried about me jizzing? Yeah, that was really kind of him. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. I thought so. 
But as I mentioned before, today's queef of the week okay. is none other than Chris Harrison. Queef of the week. And that's from Matt's wife. <laughs> it's Matt's wife with her own queef. Thank you, Matt's wife. That Matt the Bachelor? Or no, no, Matt? no. This is just Matt oh, okay. who emailed his okay, wife, his okay. wife queefing. Okay. Not Matt the Bachelor. This Matt a Bachelor? M- Matt is the Bachelor. Which season is that? There's, There's probably been like current seven one. Matts, right? Uh, yeah, probably, but it's this current Matt. Uh, so I Black Matt. Blatchler. The, the, that's what they're calling it? The Blatchler? hmm <laughs> <laughs> That seems right up the problematic alley that Chris Harrison has and found himself in. And here we go. In. Perfect yes. segue. So from what I understand, okay. oh my gosh. as a non-Bachelor watcher, okay. <clears throat> one of the women, and I don't know, Rachel McCattell or something like uh, that? K- Kirkinell. Kirkinell. Something. I think that's right, but I... We, can we don't care about their that. last names. Okay. They don't even care about them on the show. They Rachel say Rachel K. K. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's probably what? An interior designer. Uh, do you know her occupation? They tell those usually. She's like such a recent graduate that. She's like, my dad's rich. That's yeah, what they just put that in the I don't rich think dad. she has. <laughs> One of the girls says socialite. That Another just means girl's rich dad. was queen. They, <laughs> they're getting creative. <laughs> with a K? No, with a Q. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah. <laughs> ah, you know, Blatchler, we never know. So yeah. uh, what's happened, because the, the African-American gentleman is the bachelor and he is, uh, uh, you know, courting women. One of the women was in one of these southern sororities back in the day. And uh, it's uh, come Only to a couple years ago. Well, yes, a couple of years ago. What does that mean? Like uh... 2018, this surfaced. Oh, my Lord. That's not that long ago. Well, it surfaced in 2018, but it, did it take place in 2018? Yeah, I think I guess you're right. They're she's young. right out of college, so. Now, I, were you in a sorority? Sure was. Was it one of these? Uh, no, see, slave I was ones? in a sorority. I wasn't <laughs> in a sorority in the South. Yeah. <laughs> which is very different. I went to UC Santa Barbara. What was that sorority like? I was just party. Yeah, party. just partying. Yeah, just party. Hot toddies. Now, do you think you have to <laughs> do the slave activities if you're in the South and you're in a sorority? Like, do they make you? You know, I don't think they make you. You don't have to go, for sure. Well, you don't have to be a part of the sorority. You don't have to be a part of the sorority, and you don't have to go to the event if you're uncomfortable. Interesting. This girl clearly was ignorant. She uh, was like... Didn't know what... I think she was just like, all my friends are doing it. Right. That's my that's because, my question about it. Really, the is like, South. It's like the antebellum party. Which right. What does that mean, by the way? Because there's Lady Antebellum as a band that they changed their name oh. to Lady A. Did oh, you know really? that? Yeah. Because antebellum is racist. But what? Why? Any? Why is it racist? <laughs> what? Why is what racist? Ante- antebellum. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know what the fuck that means. Right? Antebellum. You didn't even care. Nah. What is that? Is that? Is it's that something like that white word? people are erasing from history, and I don't even know what it was. Can I mean, we give it a Google? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll Google that, Chief. You got it. Hell yeah, antebellum. Uh, it, it's definitely like it's representing the old South. So they okay. are like plantation owners. So is it? Yeah, is it like a a woman who owned a plantation, a person who owned a plantation? I don't know, but yes, they are. It's like a plantation party. They had a party at a plantation, and it was like they're dressed up as like plantation people. They yeah. didn't have like you know black people in chains or anything like that but still it's a little problematic <laughs> well, you know it's because and it doesn't look like there were any black people in the sorority typically not right typically not yeah. so that's what the um rachel who was the first black bachelorette was interviewing chris harrison and she said what would i have represented at that party mm-hmm. and it's true like yeah she would have been like good. the maid that's what they, yeah. she would have been there and felt like that. You know yeah. what I mean? They would have been like, your outfit's a little <laughs> off from the historical context. But yeah, so she brought Chris Harrison. This is where this is where Chris Harrison becomes the queef of the week. Now, Chris okay. Harrison has been the host of The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, The Bachelor in Paradise for how long? Since I was like a child. It yeah, seems. since um, 2000. Since 2000. Yeah. So he's like Jeff Probst times 12. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because he's got Jeff Probst is the host of Survivor. Oh, yes. Because Jeff Probst only has Survivor. It's not like they did Survivor uh, in Paradise. You know what I'm saying? So Chris Harrison is just working, 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 racking up stacks on stacks on stacks. And then he goes on that extra show that you just mentioned, uh, which they gave the first uh, Black Bachelorette. They gave her a she's a host of extra. At this point. Yeah. So she had Chris and Harrison she is on great. to talk about it. She's fantastic. She's fantastic. It, yeah. yeah. And um, 
so she had Chris Harrison on, and when he came on, he defended this mm. woman's antics, right? It was so... Did you watch it? I watched part of it. Okay, it's 15 minutes of, yeah, him, I couldn't, uh... of him defending Rachel K. Like... I'm not the woke police like, you know, who am I to say this is wrong? And like, maybe it's it's wrong in 2021. But was it wrong in 2018? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it especially was. That's what that's if it was if he was like, was it wrong in 1964? You'd be like, OK. But he said 2018. <laughs> yeah, he said 2018. And uh, but it so was like so he, cringy. And but so not only, though, it's not just the sorority photo. Right. She's also been liking like confederate flag posts oh my god so he's defending this girl <laughs> <laughs> that shouldn't be defended it's not racist this is symbol she clearly doesn't she that's my she's heritage. racist or she really just has no clue um but all the girls on season 25 of the bachelorette or bachelor all put out a statement besides Rachel Kay mm. saying they do not agree with Chris Harrison and what he had to say. Oh boy. And like we're standing together and we are defending uh Rachel the the extra interviewer. All he had to do was just not talk about it. All he had to say was, you know, I'm I've actually done this in my head what I would have <laughs> said if I was Chris Harrison. He needed to say, listen, Rachel K hasn't said anything yet. I'm going to wait until she says something and then I'll decide what I think about it. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to You know what I say is Chris Harrison? Okay, what? I go, uh, I have no comment on that at this time. Uh, you can field all those concerns to the producers. And then I'll go <laughs> count my money. Okay, also, Rachel asked him, there's two Rachels, so it's confusing, but the extra right. interviewer asked him, do you think Bachelor franchise needs to take ownership of this? And he said, no. Well, that's why. Why is he speaking for the Bachelor <laughs> franchise? He said, we can't. We can't just make everybody happy all the time. People are always upset with us. And we can't just say <laughs> I, sorry. He's for like, everything. I already gave you a black bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> what else am I supposed to do here? But is he an executive producer on the show? He's got to be, right? Because he must be if he's speaking this way. If I'm a be. producer on the show, I'm not throwing my host to the wolves. Yeah, he's got to be. He must have some but, ownership but in it. I think, okay, no spoilers, because I know everyone here watches, but I think Rachel K wins, and that's why he was defending her so much. It was so evident. Well, that that'll bring this whole th operation to its knees if that's the <laughs> case, right? I think he chooses her. And that's why he's like trying really hard to make her sound good. Okay, wait okay. a minute. If he chooses her. Mm -hmm. A racist. And she's racist. <laughs> and they fuck. <laughs> did we just solve something? We. So <laughs> Is this the true. ultimate <laughs> sowing of, of uh, discord? I mean, it's. I have a question. It, would this be a deal breaker for you? What's that? If you, so a girl was racist? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm white, so it would be a little different. She'd be like, you know, a little, she'd be like, I don't want to go there. There's a little too many the, uh, uh, inner city blacks. And I'd be like, whoa, how about you pump the brakes, lady? <laughs> but if I was black and she was racist, I don't know how that would work out. Do you know what I mean? Like, clearly she must not be racist to be with it. Like, does she display any sort of disdain for this man? <laughs> no. So then, like, my point is, how racist can she be? Right. But Chris Harrison didn't even point that fact out. That's true. He could have said. He could have been like, if she's listen, so racist. Listen, she's dating a black guy. So she's on television making out with him. How could she be that racist? Yeah, there must be some sort of ignorant, maybe, but she not did. Racist. So Rachel K did come out with a, by the way, Bachelor is my like fantasy league sports thing. Of course, so that's why I like, wanted to discuss it with you. Um, she came out with a statement saying she's very ignorant and she is aware and she's going to work on it. Yeah. And she's so sorry. You idiot woman. Idiot woman. Yeah. That's basically she she just owned up to being extremely ignorant. That's the best way to go. If you're like <laughs> if you get caught doing some racist shit, all you got to be is like, whoa, I'm just stupid. Right. <laughs> I yeah. don't hate anybody. I'm just stupid and didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. And but do you know Chris Harrison is stepping down? 
No, that's what I was. Yeah, I mean, oh, he's okay, lost yeah. his job. Yeah. Be- well, that's what makes me think that he is not. Now that I'm connecting the dots, it makes me think he has producer stakes in this show, in this franchise. Like he must have ownership in some capacity because he's going to step. As- he stepped down as opposed to getting fired. So he'll step oh. aside, let someone else host, and he'll still make a little cake from being cake. the producer. Yeah. Okay. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because this is a gravy train yeah. that you don't just explode on the fucking tracks like that. Right? Yeah. I mean, how? I, I can't believe he just blew his own life up like that. I know. And it didn't even have anything to do with him. It's not like he was caught in blackface. He was like just talking about some other shit. And I have more, I have more tea to spill. Spill it. Okay, so Rachel, who interviewed him, she said that he just apologized because he started getting backlash. But the day after the interview... He messaged her and was like, hey, that was such a great interview. Thanks so much for doing that with me. I love that we can talk like this. And he was proud of his interview. No, there's no doubt in my mind that he did that uh, extra interview and thought, well, I I, I squashed that one. (laughs) Really nipped that one in the bud. (laughs) He had no idea that he just flamed the problem. No, he thought he did a really good job. And no, was super sure. woke. But you, uh, you're wearing a sports shirt. I appreciate it. The yeah. spirit of the show. Yeah. And you were showing me it and you were explaining. You you looked at, down and you were like naming the players yeah. for me. So that is a 2020 World Series champion. Yes, it is. Los Angeles Bingo. Dodgers. Mm-hmm. Getting ready for baseball to start back up again. I'm excited. And uh, I mean, we can just get into the sports and then I, I want to okay, hear perfect. your take on it. Beep, 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 beep. I like when you sing along. Yeah. It was nice with your little harmony there. Thank you. We didn't have a remix today, just the old school acapella version. But uh, I always have this discussion, you know, people, they are like, sports are gay. That's what they love to say when I talk about sports. But we don't really even talk about sports. I'm more obsessed because of my background and my occupation and the way that sort of I was, you you were talking about how you had vocal lessons and dance classes and things like that. I was raised to be a broadcaster. uh, I thought you were going to Broadway star. No, 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 no. (laughs) I wish. Um, But uh, so I'm always obsessed with the broadcast of a game. Were you really raised to be a broadcaster? In my own head. I I grew up uh, just watching. I was obsessed with watching the broadcasts of games. I was obsessed with the play by play guys. I would call into all the post game shows as a little kid. I would call in every every day. I would call in and try to get on the post game show. Um, Hockey Hotline with Brian Blessing and Mike Robitaille. I would call in as a little kid and I'd I'd think of 10 questions during the game. (laughs) And I'd pick my best one. Whoa. Yeah, I was like a psychopath. When did Gay Rick come around? What's Gay, his name? Gay Lewis? Yeah, when did Gay oh. Lewis come in? I mean, the that picture? was that was just a radio bit from from back in the day. But oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I started working in radio when I was a teenager. So wow. I um I parlayed that passion into a internship or what have you and then came through it. But I am still obsessed with broadcasts and it, and it blows because now it's a little harder to watch them. If you don't have like cable or whatever, you have to like stream online and things like that. And uh, I think the broadcast is a way that you can bring, you know, per- perhaps a non-interested party into being interested because of all the mm. things that go. If you point out like mistakes and fun things like that, like even just like any you, you do broadcasts here at the studio. Right, the live shows? The live shows. Mm-hmm. But you've never sat down and, I mean, I'm sure you've sat down and taken in a, a live broadcast of a sporting event, but you don't go, do you, do you think about the th- same things? Like, do you think about if you were in the truck or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Every time I see a mess up, I, I cringe because I know just how. Like, you know, someone's screaming oh, yeah. in the I, back. Oh, oh yeah. it's the Someone best, right? really just messed up. And it, one flash. It, it's, yeah, one little, you, you look at it in like the visual sense, eh? The switching and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the switching, I look at like the, the layout of like the graphical overlays and stuff, the stingers and everything. Hell like, yeah. I look at all that stuff. And I look at how the people juggle all those balls that are like on the air. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they're passing it off to other people. They're, the transitions that they do and things like that. I'm obsessed with those. And I'm also obsessed with the way the players interact with the broadcast because they are a variable that is oftentimes uh, one that can just, you know, 
change the game. You know what I'm saying? It can make things very awkward or weird. You mean like in the interview or when... In an interview or yeah. just playing the game. Oh, right. When they got the little mic like on them. Yeah, because... Uh, well, sometimes, and we'll get to this in a little bit, but some NFL Films does this wonderful thing where they put mics on all the players. Oh. And, they don't, and they'll do a thing called mic'd up where they'll play snippets and it's always because it's the nfl and they're protecting their product it's always like milk toast garbage they're like let's get out there and get a w you know you hear that kind of dumb shit meanwhile they're out there saying like f words n words you know what i mean they're all over the place but that's the kind of mic'd up josh wants to hear Mm -hmm. but we'll get to one i thought there's one that's leaked out and it usually takes a disgruntled nfl films employee to get these out there but we'll get into that in a moment but i want to bring up uh this one post-game press conference uh, can we play the video of that? Do you have that ready to go? And I don't even remember who this was. Um, but there was a, a post-game press conference and a man was describing... This is what... I love this because I've been to many post-game press conferences as a... <laughs> I had a press pass for the Bills, so I thought I was like a member of the media. Mm-hmm. And I would go to these things. I would never ask a question, ever. Uh, But it was fun to hear some of the dipshit journalists who take themselves really seriously asking serious questions, trying to get that sound bite. Uh, This one, they definitely could not play on the news. Okay. Oh, I'm excited. And it's, uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's uh, this man describing taking an L, you know what I mean? He just lost the game. So he's describing that feeling. We got too comfortable and relaxed with it. They just busted in our mouth and we just had to eat that up and take it, take it in, uh, take it on our chin. So he just described getting mouth fucked by the opposing team. <laughs> Can you play it again? Please. The teams that we got too comfortable and relaxed with, they just busted in our mouth. And we just had to eat that up and take it take it in uh take it on our chin. See, I feel like he was like gonna say like, you know, like busted us in the mouth, like you know, he meant like punched us in the face kind of thing, like that sort of metaphor. And then he realized what he said and he kind of doubled down. I he's like then you gotta you know eat that up it doesn't, shit I really am I, fucking up here <laughs> talking I, about some real gay shit here it doesn't seem like he knows though I th- it, that's it what that's what like I mean like the way he aware. hesitates it's like he <laughs> he every time he says the next thing he didn't mean to do that he's this, like shit I keep making it worse I swear this would be me in an interview <laughs> for if cameras were on me and it's a miracle I haven't done that yet for this. <laughs> I just think I get really like nervous. That wouldn't be the ana- I mean, <laughs> granted, I I think I'm a a bit more cavalier, so I would have probably been like, "Hey, they mouth fucked us out there." <laughs> I mean, I took I took a bucket of jizz down the throat, and uh, now I got cum burps for days. So, <laughs> see, I would have gone that way, but. Uh, I don't know that he meant to do that. And he's over there like, I think every time he said the next thing, he's like, in his brain, he goes, fuck. (laughs) Do you think? Yeah, it sounded like that. He's like, you know, so we took it on the chin. Damn it. What am I doing? (laughs) Yeah, again. again. But imagine playing this on your air and being like, yeah, they lost today. The Panthers, uh, the Pittsburgh Panthers. (laughs) Play it one more time. Listen to it. Yeah, let me see his thoughts behind all this. The teams that we got too comfortable and relaxed with, they just busted in our mouth. And we just had to... Eat that up and take it, take it in, uh, take it on our chin. Take You're it right. on our chin. Yeah, he's like, take. You just have to take it. He was like, I'm not going to say take You're it because right. that means I'm taking a load. But so say take it on the chin. That's a. a he's saying. aware. Yeah, he's he's like, oh, how do I get out of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just digging his hole deeper. Ah, uh, but who's as this I, guy? Uh, I don't even know who this is. Can it's a college basketball him? player. He's Aww. a he's a sweetheart though. Sweet, I can tell he's a sweetheart. He's not a homophobe. Clearly, he's like. <laughs> You know, we went back to the locker room. They're like, what was that gay shit you were talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? Today's Josh Potter show brought to us by the fine folks at HelloFresh. What is HelloFresh, you ask? Well, with HelloFresh, you can get fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouthwatering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. I hate thinking about what I have to cook. I, ha- I hate thinking about what I have to eat. Uh, what I'm going to go pick out at the store in order to make things. It's just an arduous thing to me, and it's a nuisance to figure out all of those things. With HelloFresh, I don't have to worry about that anymore because they cut out all the stress. I mean, the meal planning has never been easier for me. There's no more grocery store trips. I can enjoy the cooking because they just make it so easy. They've got the recipes. They've got the ingredients marked down right to the 
measurement, so I don't have to do any measuring or anything like that. It's super quick, super easy, and it makes eating uh, healthy easy as well. It's never been easier. They've got uh, low cal, low carbs, or uh, excuse me, carb smart, uh, vegetarian and pescatarian options every week. And uh, that's uh, enough for me to be able to choose for a variety of things. And uh, I can just go clickety click, clickety clack, and bam, it shows up right to my door. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Josh Potter 10 and use the code Josh Potter 10 and you get 10 free meals, including free shipping. And that's uh, again, HelloFresh.com slash Josh Potter 10. Use the code Josh Potter 10, 10 free meals and you get the free shipping. It's HelloFresh America's number one meal kit. Um, let's listen to this next one. Uh, Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn Lynch is a guy, my dream guest for this show. I used to interview Marshawn Lynch back in the day, 2009. I was the only guy he would talk to really? in the Bills locker room. Well, congratulations. We're the, we're the same age. Yeah, because I would never ask him anything serious. I'd okay. be like, what are you doing for Halloween? You know, like that kind of thing. Okay. Right? <laughs> so I was the only guy he talked to. Plus, we were the same age. So he'd be like, he'd like pull me in the hallway and do an interview with me and stuff out of the outside so no one could see us. Oh, wow. It was awesome. So I want to get him on the show That's a big someday. deal. He'll come on the show. I hope so. Yeah. But uh, he actually sat in. I don't even know what this is, if this is college or what kind of football this is. It says, I want to, is this the new like interactive league? I don't know. There's an, a new league that Johnny Manziel, Johnny Football just joined where you could like, it's on Twitch and you can like tweet in play calls. And like have them do your play calls. Like it's like a, oh. and then it's really stupid. Interactive. It's like interactive. Yes, indeed. So I don't know if that's what this is, if they got Marshawn for this, but here's Marshawn Lynch on the broadcast. Okay. In the booth. I'm going to go ahead and throw back this Caesar salad with these croutons and all this shit though, right? <laughs> go ahead, take me a nice fat shit, get my stomach all right and everything. Then I'm going to go out here and try to run for 200 on a 50 yard field like what's happening. <laughs> See, they're on a, a smaller field. It's like they're playing like it's like shitty football. Uh -huh. And Marshawn Lynch is up in the booth. He's like about to have this Caesar salad go down there and fuck some people up. Oh, so, OK. Was he unaware that Mike was on? No, he was just that he was completely aware the mic was on. Oh. That's just the way Marshawn talks, oh. especially when he's feeling himself. Go ahead. Play it okay, again. Play it again. I'm going to go ahead and throw back this Caesar salad with these croutons and all this shit, though, right? <laughs> go ahead, take me a nice fat shit, get my stomach all right and everything. Then I'm going to go out here and try to run for 200 on a 50-yard field like what's happening. <laughs> I love it. Because he, he still can go, Marshawn. He wants to get back. He, every now and then he like hints that he's going to come back in the league. He wants to do a playoff run. So he's telling these fucking jokers. He's like, I'm going to toss back this Caesar salad, take a fat shit, and then run up and down this fucking short-ass field. That's what he's... I just translated it for you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, so interesting. Now, this isn't on NBC or anything like that <laughs> okay. because it's this dog shit football league, whatever it is. Okay. So I think that they're the announcers are laughing and everything like that. I would have laughed anyway. <laughs> but they didn't like cut away or... Because they're like, this is, this is the Channel internet. 54. Yeah, they're like, thank God something happened that's exciting in this <laughs> thing so that we can fucking get some eyes on us here. Right, right. Uh, now, something that happened in the NFL... A gentleman by the name of Deshaun Watson. Do you know who he is? Of course. <laughs> he plays for the Houston Texans, for those of you who don't know out there. Currently. But he's very disgruntled in oh, his yeah. situation. He wants to be traded. Okay. And uh, there's this kind of hostage situation going on right now between Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans. But uh, aside from that, came across this piece of mic'd up action from uh, Deshaun Watson. I'm activated and I'm ready to go. He masturbated, and he's, and he's ready, ready to, to go. go. Now, that's a weird pregame ritual. <laughs> and I'm, not, I'm this is kind of me just uh, putting myself out there. That's kind of my pre-show ritual. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's like an anxiety thing. Like you just gotta like sometime before you go, you know the shower. It's all about the shower. Oh, but not else. like a Louis C.K. dressing room. No, 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 no. I'm in my hotel <laughs> okay, room. In your hotel. Okay. Yeah, this isn't like I need a woman to watch me before <laughs> I go on stage. Can you help out with that, waitress? Um, huh. Wow. So, but no, I, 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 I always thought athletes though hold their jizz in their bodies mm. because if they release it, that's like it takes away from them. Like boxers always say that. Mm. Remember that? Of from, course. <laughs> <laughs> I have you ever you I mean I've heard on your other podcasts and some content that you discuss when you discuss guys that you're attracted to you always bring up soccer players 
Oh yeah, no, I I do think soccer players are ha- have a great body. But have you dated uh, many of them? Just just one. Just one. Had, yeah. Was this his uh, pregame situation? Well, is this no? Oh, I didn't ask. I mean, just as an I athlete. didn't ask. I just as an athlete, I didn't know. Um, <laughs> it's like, babe, I gotta rub one out. All right, I got a game at four. Well, when I dated him, he was um, a soccer teacher. Oh. coach so he wasn't really he wasn't doing active it in anymore. the uh, was he wasn't like oh man before a game yeah no i would just you know <laughs> pull a porn up <laughs> no i do think that's i actually have i don't know if this is normal i don't think it is okay I and don't i'm think wondering so. i don't know if it is that's what i was curious about because like i said i've heard athletes say the, the exact opposite that they have to like hold it in Oh, right, right. Like they've told and, yeah. their, like uh, boxers and stuff, they've told their wives, like, you know, not, you can't fuck me till the fight. Interesting. Because I got to keep all my jizz up inside my body. <laughs> Unlimited. Whoa. Did you just press that? I did. Oh my God, your timing. That was great. <laughs> you know, he's not jerking off before a fucking game. If we had a mic'd up of Cecil Wilson, he would be like, I haven't masturbated since 2004. <laughs> And it was an accident when I had a dream. He doesn't. Uh, touch. Do you know who Russell Wilson is? He's married to Ciara. Oh, really? Yeah. I know Do you Ciara. Know Ciara? <laughs> yeah, okay. I was trying to think the other day. I don't know if I know one Ciara song. I I I. Come on. I would now. know it if I heard it. Like Sorry, one two step. Let me see. One two one two, one, two step. step. Yeah. Okay, I know. One, two, there yeah. you go. Got it, got I knew that song. You're right. Didn't know it was Ciara. I've actually, you've talked about this guy on your show before. All the time. We sell merch. Okay. Yeah. I've seen his picture from this podcast. Yes. No, he's, Mm -hmm. and he's all over the place. He's been in GQ this past week. Uh, There was a spread for Valentine's Day. Him and Sierra did 33 questions where they asked each other questions and uh, like kind of like a newlywed game. Okay. And all of Russell Wilson's questions were like, how many times I go to the Pro Bowl? What year did I enter the league? It's like, dude, this is your Wikipedia. You're just... (laughs) Oh. Like have a little personality. See, it's a little bit of an ego. It's not an ego. He's that boring that he doesn't oh, have anything. He was like, <laughs> doesn't have any questions to ask her about his life because well, he's just I such a snooze. I do think that some football players suffer great traumatic concussion. Not brains. yet for him. Okay. I mean, that could be down the road, but okay. not yet for him. Hmm. One of his linemen, they're blaming. Uh, this is a story we had as a queef of the week a few weeks ago. Um, one of his offensive linemen, Chad Wheeler, beat the shit out of his girlfriend not cool and uh now he's claiming cte as his defense Hmm. (laughs) interesting eh very let's get into the news a little bit okay are we done with sports that's it for the sports for today there's just no sports happening uh, we did have Na- NASCAR is back. Uh, wonderful Daytona 500. Didn't get to speak about it last week uh, because of the way we are taping. Michael McDowell won the Daytona 500. Mm. If, if if you knew who that was, if you understood that, that would be like, um, I'm trying to compare it to something for you, Chase. Yes. Uh, Bachelor. It would be like the drunk woman on The Bachelor in that first episode. Yes. It'd be like her winning. Oh my <laughs> God. It would be an uproar. Yeah, people, lo- I mean... Michael McDowell, 13 years ago, I'll never forget watching. I watch qualifying because I'm a loser. Um, I, pretty much all the things about NASCAR make me a loser to a lot of people, but uh, I have to stop tweeting about it because I lose followers like you wouldn't believe. Really? Yeah, and know- I'm just, I love it. I don't know. I've just grew up with it. But I watch qualifying, and I'm watching it one day back in 2008, Texas Motor Speedway, almost 13 years to the day. And uh, Michael McDowell had the worst qualifying lap I've ever seen in my entire life. And he just careened up into the wall. His car exploded. And then it rolled like throughout the fucking front stretch of the track. And I was like, that this is the worst NASCAR driver I've ever seen in my life. And I was, it was kind of like he was okay. So I laughed, you know, I'm like, uh-huh. oh, what an idiot. Um, I put it on my Instagram for those who want to see it. But um, yeah, now 13 years later, he wins the Super Bowl of NASCAR. Oh, I did see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He won. He won. He wins the Super Bowl in Ascot. It's his first win of his life, by the way. Underdog. He's never won in his life, and his first win is at the Daytona 500 after 360 I mean, I bet they're going to make a movie about this. Uh, It's going to be a shitty one. Okay. (laughs) 
That sounds like an inspirational story. No, he is a sweetheart too. It's a, oh. I feel bad making fun of him, but it is. Uh, it was a. I also had money on the guys that won second and third. Oh. Yeah, so I'm a little pissed. I'm so sorry about that. No, it's okay. But Man. yes, that's it for the sports. Okay. I, I, until baseball comes back, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I am going to go visit spring training when well, I'm done. Well, I in have Florida. a different shirt to change into now that we're <laughs> done oh. with sports. <laughs> Just Did kidding. you think the whole hour would be? About <laughs> no, sports? no, I'm kidding. But now that we're in the news and we've got some, uh, we you know the people out there, Chase. They're yeah, re- tell me. They're reporters for the show. They can send in their stories mm-hmm. because that's as good as regular reporters are these days. They're just parroting other media outlets now yeah, and passing true. it off as their own. So I figured we can just have Josh Potter show reporters. They can send things into oh. Josh Potter show at YMH exciting. And Calvin is uh, one of the most recent ones. And I haven't even read this article yet, okay. but the headline has just made me giggle. A uh, couple dies after <laughs> having sex at their kid's wedding. Oh, no. Re- uh, instant reactions was an oh, no, but she was trying not to laugh. Did you notice that? <laughs> I don't know what it is about such a disturbing thing. Uh, we don't know the circumstances. If it's- uh, oh, murder. No, we don't know yet. Okay. Let's get into it and find out. A Canadian couple who traveled to Mexico for their daughter's wedding were found dead after the man suffered a heart attack and squashed his wife when they had sex in a resort <gasps> hot tub. Holy shit. Oh so my god. So the He had a heart attack yeah, and then he drowned her. his wife in the hot tub but with his weight. <gasps> oh That's my pretty fucking god. gnarly. Charles McKenzie, sixty seven, was in a whirlpool spa with his wife, Dorothy, sixty three, when tragedy struck. The couple traveled from Nova Scotia, uh to a beachside resort in Playa del Carmen for their daughter Jill's wedding, which was planned just days after the couple were found dead. I know that they're more concerned about the remains and cremation and things like that, says Charles McKenzie's brother-in-law. I don't really know about the wedding. So they might forego the wedding. Uh, The man's heart attack likely caused the woman to drown. (laughs) An official from the Mexican state of Quintana Roo told the Canadian press. And how do they know they were having sex? I think his penis might have been, been in inside body. of her. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> I don't know if rigor mortis just keeps that bad boy hard, you know? I don't know. <laughs> oh uh, the gosh. room was perfectly fine. All the equipment was working perfectly. What the family mentioned was a heart attack. Uh, we, we are treating them as our own family, he said, noting the staff were helping the Canadians deal with the local authorities. All the group is very calm in the best way they can be. Uh, They were very nice people, very friendly, said of uh, someone said of the couple who was known to be friends. Um, He was more of a reserved, quiet guy. Of course, everyone was friends with him. Jill was counting down the days until she heads down south for her wedding on Facebook. Okay, so this is just all like sad, like they were nice people. But Oh, how uh, embarrassing. I think it's actually a lovely way to go. I okay. I thought maybe you'd have that response, and I disagree. Okay, do tell. I think that is not how I'd want to be remembered. Like you're always going to be talked about as oh, the couple that died during sex at the wedding. Yeah, and but what would how how would you rather be remembered? Just a a normal death. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a normal death. I want to go out with. <laughs> But Blaze of glory. You're a sex worker, so it like is in line with your Very careers true. and passions, and it's it does up the odds to die having sex <laughs> being a sex worker. I'm sure. Yeah. But nevertheless, I think it's romantic. You do? Yeah, it's very <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. It's true. They died together. It could right. be like the Notebook situation. Yeah. <laughs> what if like he was having a heart attack and then she just pulled him on top of her? Go take me with you. Yeah, yeah. She's like, yeah. And then used sweet. his weight to drown herself. It is sweet. Do you? I mean, that's how love. devastating for the the people getting married, though. That's Im- uh, it's if anything a minor inconvenience. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, an inconvenience. Well, it's their parents, so it's probably shitty. But it's like, uh, you know, what if what if the kids like a real shithead, you know, and they're like, God, mom and dad, really. <laughs> Like two days before. Well, you know, at the wedding, they're going to all have to do a toast to the parents. Yeah, it takes attention away, is my point. And they're going to have to talk about the situation. It's just going to be, a, it's humiliating. I think at some point uh, for the woman, the bride, the it goes away from being, you're grief stricken 
to being annoyed that you have to share the spotlight. Yeah. Now. Oh, you ought to share it. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. You can't brush that one. Under. You can't ignore it. Yeah. Ooh. That... It's unclear whether they're going to, according to this article, whether or not they're going to have the wedding or not. So. Oh, I thought you could say whether they're going to heaven or hell. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, well, it didn't say that in there either. <laughs> it sounded like the onion. Like that sounded like a fake article. Well, it's from Calvin. It's a, it's a legit reporter okay. for the Josh That's Potter from show. from Calvin. Thank yeah, you, this Calvin. one from Max. It involves another uh, bit of funerals, if you will. Okay. Opposite of weddings. Okay. One wedding, one funeral story. Right. Uh, in this story, a funeral home van with a body inside uh, stolen in North St. Louis County. So someone stole a funeral home van. With a body inside With a body it. inside oh, of it. Wow. That's right. Police are asking the public's help to find a vehicle stolen from North St. Louis County <laughs> Quick Trip with a body in it Thursday. The van has William C. Harris's funeral decals on the side and green wreaths with an H inside of them on the back. Police were called to the gas station. Uh, at 1030 in the morning for a report of a stolen vehicle. <laughs> Fucking St. Louis is gnarly. I have a friend in St. Louis. His car got stolen twice in the first six months that he lives there. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's pretty I, gnarly I, there. I think almost maybe the person stole it and didn't realize there was a dead body in it. I'm pretty certain of that. Yeah, I think they just noticed they're like van. Oh, OK, great. Yeah. So we're on the same page. But we'll see. Because okay. uh, according to this article, the vehicle was left running and unattended in a parking lot. You don't want to do that in St. Louis. Uh, someone got in and drove it away. Turns out the van had a body in it. Mm. The body inside the van is that of an adult female. The body oh. has also not been recovered. So maybe he was like, he knew what was up. Maybe he's been following this van around. Uh-huh. And wanted yeah. to, the body. The body for uh -huh. that. <laughs> Police have not released the identity of the deceased woman. Hopefully she's an elderly one and not one of a looker. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, 5.30 p.m. Thursday, police said they have two persons of interest. One, ooh, this is interesting. One, a white male, medium height, with black and gray hair. At the time of the incident, he was wearing a navy and white baseball cap and a gray hoodie, dark pants, and a black ski mask. Two, uh -huh. a white female, medium uh -huh. height, with brown or red hair. At the time of the incident, she was wearing a black jacket, dark pants, and dark boots. She also had a black backpack on. So these are the people of interests. And, uh, you know, this is definitely white people crimes. Yeah. When it involves a corpse. Yeah. Oh, you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think if it was uh, one of our, our fellow... Uh, the uh, inner city blacks... <laughs> they would have been like they would have noticed the body and been like uh uh and that shit would have been a block <laughs> block down the road just left running again they would have found it immediately well so i worked on this show called 911 Ooh, and i know i've seen commercials oh did you so we did lots of these 911 stories and a lot of them were people stealing cars and then realizing there was a kid in the back and then they'd abandon the they just leave the car and they right. they the kid was always found so yeah, usually. Because that's I, kidnapping. That's on top of uh, Grand Theft that's Auto. That's kidnapping. Yeah. I, I am an expert a little bit in this 911 car napping sitch. But never a dead corpse, eh? No. So usually they tend to leave the car if there's a body in it. But this, right. this that's is why interesting. I, these white people, they this probably saw the body in it and they were like, bonus. <laughs> now I got a van and a body. <laughs> oh my God. So what are they going to do? They're out looking for those Josh, two folks. What are they gonna do? We don't know. Keep your eyes out, Crime Stoppers. Call the number. I don't know. This is in Ohio. This is in St. Louis. Oh, St. Louis, where all cars go to get That's stolen. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, good luck to that. Story. Good luck to that story. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your body comes back unscathed, alive too. <laughs> yeah, maybe it'll be alive <laughs> afterwards. Who knows? But it was already dead, so mm. that's one thing to take into account. Uh, this story is uh, one that I took notice of. Have you okay. ever had a peeping Tom? Um, no. No. Well, th bless the stars, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you, uh, how would you react to having one? Um, Negatively, I'm th sure. Probably but, yeah. not good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'd probably like, I'm really I'm bad at confrontation and polite. I'd probably be like, no worries. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask yeah, like, you. No worries. <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> that was literally what I was going to project onto you was that you would yeah. be like, was I in the right light? Yeah. <laughs> was the window open was enough? Was it okay for you? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. You'd make it more easy for them to peep on you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I. That's what I, I honestly, it's hilarious that you said that because I was going to ask you that question. Uh, yeah, um, that's what would happen. Yeah, I mean, because I, I actually dated a girl who 
was like turned on by the idea of a peeping Tom. Oh. And she would like bring that up as a fantasy. Oh, you'd role play being a No, no, no. Tom. I would never role play, but she would be like, it would be so hot if like there was a guy in a car with binoculars. I'd be like, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, it's just mm. wild. But anywho. That is wild. I actually have never met a girl that has said that. Voyeurism girls are just fucking yikes. Some of them take it a little too far. <laughs> In this uh, story, though, a dramatic video shows a Texas mom body slamming a suspected peeping Tom. There's no way we have this video, right? I would have heard about it. I got the video, but Pull no idea. No shit. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Let's see it. Here so we, go. we just have the video of the body slam, I'd imagine. She body slams the suspected peeping Tom looking into her teenage daughter's <gasps> bedroom window. Oh, I wasn't looking. Go do it again. Oh, that was great. What is this on a dash cam or something? <laughs> oh my God. She like signed her up to be line, she middle played, linebacker. She played sports. The way the guy tried to like throw a juke on her and she just like didn't even move. She didn't get caught in her steps at all. Look at that. Kata. Wow. God, is that Clay Matthews? Holy hell. <laughs> First instinct was to just make sure he didn't go any further, said the mom, Phyllis Pena. Uh, my kids are my life and just making sure I protect them. The Lake Jackson mom said she got home from a store around 7 at January 31st to find the suspect staring into the window of her 15-year-old daughter. He ran away as the mom called the police. The suspect was found in the neighborhood by police, but he tried to run away again. He started to run toward the mom outside of the home and then Penna dove out at him and tackled him the yes. daughter helped pin the suspect down until cops came to make the arrest oh my that's a great who who reported this this one was me this was all me oh good job Josh. you know in my investigative kudos journalism to to you thank you it's not very often that we have somebody that actually steps in and puts themselves in a harm's way to assist apprehending somebody said the sergeant of the police department roy welch the takedown was videotaped on the police's dash cam the cop fist bumped me and he was like hey so i heard the texans are looking for a new linebacker well that's what i said yeah jj watt just got <laughs> jj watt just got released sign up this lady phyllis penna wow uh it's hilarious that the police are like kind of encouraging that because like uh here in los angeles i just recently watched this is how bored and quarantine i am you know you hear about these police chases on this citizen app or something i watched a six hour long one a couple of weeks ago <laughs> it was the longest ever in the history of police chases in los angeles longer than oj longer than way longer than oj mm. same speed though the reason this took so long was because the man was traveling at first irrationally like like erratic, excuse me, like erratic speeds, like crazy fast in residential areas. And then he was just on the highway. He went all the way down to like San Gabriel or whatever and uh, like by the water and then came back the same way. But he was going like five miles an hour the whole time. Oh, yeah. So and, and, five miles an hour. Yeah. And that's why the tires like he could go on the rims. It didn't matter. So he was going very slow. You mean but he they had a, couldn't catch him at five miles an hour. Well, they could catch him. But the problem was he had the suspect was apparently armed. So they didn't okay. want him like, and he was, he was like, if you could see him in the video, he was like rummaging through the car all the time. I don't know. So he was obviously very mentally disturbed and they didn't want him like just firing bullets back. Plus at this point now, like people are gathering. It's very much like OJ in terms of like people gathering on the overpasses because this has been going on for so long and there's such like a hullabaloo surrounding it. And, uh, but there were some people who were almost like getting involved with their automobiles. And I overheard through the helicopter a woman, I forget her name, but she is gorgeous, by the way. And I have, I tweeted to her. I was like, I have a crush on you <gasps> now. Did she, she write back? She just liked it. She's married, turns out. Mm. Ugh, okay. Like that stopped people okay. before. Um, <laughs> but anyway, she was saying that if people were to intervene, they can actually be charged with a crime. Oh. So police always say like, you know. Don't do that. Yeah. Like if you if you get involved or try to stop a car chase or whatever get involved in one you can be like arrested for a felony charge mm. so that's pretty wild i didn't think that and yet they were encouraging her to yes get they involved. fist bumped her and they were like hey you should play for the texans <laughs> if i was a woman mm. i wouldn't like that compliment really <laughs> <laughs> hey the texans are looking for a linebacker why don't you say you sign up <laughs> lady <laughs> next up Kay. we have a gentleman this uh -huh. is uh, Warren Police. I believe that's Warren, Ohio. Let's see. It doesn't say Warren Police. I don't know wherever that is. 
Uh, Warren police are searching for a serial pooper. After multiple vehicles have been hit, police say they've been investigating two incidents involving a man pooping inside vehicles. Police say the first incident occurred shortly after midnight at the Friendly Auto on Van Dyke when the suspect defecated into a 2009 Chrysler town and country. <laughs> the second incident happened at Twins Tire on Van Dyke, February 3rd at 5.13 a.m. Uh, surveillance video shows the man leaving his vehicle, walking over to a white van, opening up the driver's side door and squatting down. Police say the service center cleaned the vehicle at no cost to the owner. Warren police are asking for the public's help in additional information regarding this suspect. That's right, a serial pooper. I thought it was just a hobo pooping and stuff, you know, because they're out there, they have to poop, and sometimes they'd like a little privacy. Oh, you're right. But it's not. He got out of his own car and walked over to this car (gasps) to take a shit in it. Not a matter of privacy at that point. Yeah. If you have a car, you can go to a 7-Eleven and be like, can I use the bathroom real quick? Right, right, gotta go. Uh, this is something else. Yeah, I, I uh, <laughs> never heard of anything. I'm like thinking this. it's a revenge situation, but it is multiple, so maybe it's like also a fetish. <laughs> These are the where my mind goes. You yeah, know? I mean, I I was thinking that at first too. Like maybe he really hated that person, right? But he must hate a lot of people. Yeah, he's just shit. I mean, and I don't know if I would call this person a serial. I think serial pooper would indicate about <laughs> four cars. Not just two. Oh, it's just two. Yeah, so far just two incidents. You can't be a serial pooper for just doing it twice. Like, I what think... if on the first one he just got? What if he was like, "Shit, that was the wrong car," oh, and then he went back the second okay, time? Okay, okay. So it like, turns out it's this one on so, like, yeah, my B. It was an accident. Yeah, the first like, time. So that's just like kind of like uh, I don't know another crime. Say you murdered the wrong guy or something. Yeah, and you're like, up. Oh, let me go get it right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Now, if it hits four, five, six okay, people, then, then you go cereal. serial pooper. Yeah. yeah. You know? Wow. Don't you think? I think so. I I can't believe that's real. Yeah, I can't no, believe it's... most of these are real. Oh, they're all real. This is so They're crazy. all real. What else do we got here? Uh, I want to... Ooh, this one's fun. This one's a little bit thick. No. Uh-oh. Let's see what this says. Uh, do we have any other multimedia? Did I miss out on anything? Any, sometimes I forget. Oh, do we have video of the poop? Yeah, no, we, we <laughs> thank God, no. Uh, okay. No, we don't have anything else. That would be yeah. Any's nightmare. That would be like, <laughs> yikes. That would be the worst video that any would have to prep is a man shitting in a car. Could you imagine any? I wouldn't even, prep it. He wouldn't even shit in a toilet, and this man's pooping in cars. Can you, <laughs> how disgusted are you back there? I'd, I'd beat the shit out of him if I knew him I'd, right now. <laughs> Just for knowing that he does that. It Just, wouldn't even have to be my car. He's, <laughs> he's more disgusting than that racist lady earlier. <laughs> He is. To any. Rachel K is fine. She's pretty cute. But this dude, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> Back to that for a moment. Do you Ugh. think it's do you think it's her like fantasy? Like, mm. like the woman who's like, can I ask you a funny question? Do you know what I mean? No, go on. <laughs> Meaning like she might be kind of racist and she's like, this is what's turning me on about it. Oh, just saying we're gonna find out next any would you be would you fuck a girl like that uh if it, if she looked like rachel k if she was like if rachel k came up to you and was like any can i ask you a funny question yeah, i'd be like yeah what's up baby <laughs> <laughs> can i call you and then would you let her uh can i call you uh the uh, inner city blacks <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh man! Then you'd be like, tough, yeah, man. and then you get to have sex with her and be like, yeah, say it. You know what I mean? Like, what do you think? Yeah, I I would just put the the I, I put the blindfolds on. You know, I just wouldn't I wouldn't think about it figuratively, right? Eh? Yeah, the mental figuratively, blindfolds. And I just look the other way. It is what it is. I mean, she, I wouldn't date her. Oh, he she, wouldn't like, date her. No, no, of course, of course. Of course. Okay, yeah. okay. And then she, in the middle of it, she'd be like, oh, my dad would be so disgusted. <laughs> oh yeah. I have, like I have some fun deal breaker questions at some point to ask you guys. Ask away. Let's do it before this. I don't, okay. even, want, I don't even know if I want to do this story. So go ahead and ask your questions. Okay. Okay. So this is for all the gentlemen. Uh, it's, it's like Rachel Kirkinell status. Like she's gorgeous. She's like perfect. Do you want to date with her? Yada, yada. I mean, hold on. She ain't perfect. Let's okay. Okay. So whoever yeah, I... it is perfect in your mind, okay. that's who it is. And you start dating for a few months. Christmas comes along and turns out she 100% believes in Santa Claus, and but for real. I've dated stupid women before. I mean, it's not a it's deal. It's not a deal it's breaker? Not be, no. 
she won she's like santa's coming yeah that's like that's like same thing as being like i'm gonna be a singer yeah it's the same to me. <laughs> okay. you know what i mean yeah <laughs> like you're a waitress <laughs> okay yeah it's the same it is okay but so, yeah. so you you would marry that woman <laughs> sure i mean i don't care Oh, you don't I don't know her. if I'd marry the delusional woman either. See, I don't know if I'd marry either of them. But I would I would just be like, yeah, yeah, Santa, sure. Santa, sure. He's coming down the chimney. Okay. <laughs> okay. Was that it? Was there, do you have, uh, what oh, about you back there? Anybody anybody mm-hmm. uh, wouldn't f- date or fuck that girl? And he's raising his I would, hand. I would be just fine. Let me see. Nadal, what about you? Uh, yeah, I don't see that being an issue. I mean, I'd, really? I'd take that before I would take... Uh, uh, Oh, I can't wait for Passover. Like, that's after the same. <laughs> God, I've missed your anti Semitism. <laughs> Nadav, right before he was on vacation, by the way, uh, or whatever you want to call it, sabbatical or rest time or whatever it is, <laughs> he, uh, he, in, he keyed me into a new insult, which I love, and I've been saying it all the time. Suck me. Oh. Everyone, you know, go fuck yourself. Nope. Suck me. So that's my new favorite insult. Suck me. Yeah. You can say that on your clean boy hour. Or whatever. You can maybe say that on the, you can maybe say that on radio, like yeah. on cable. Suck like, me. Suck me. It's such a good one. Ew. Um, it's gross sounding. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> Do tell another deal breaker before we wrap up. Okay. Um, She's the one. She's like literally perfect. Peyton List. Um, yes. And Do you know who that is, by the way? No. She's from Cobra Kai. Have you seen Cobra Kai? No. She's like a Disney lady. Show up Peyton oh, List while you tell your deal breaker. List. Pull her up. Okay. Let me try to think of one. Um, and make sure she's of age. No, she's she's of age. She is of age. Oh, she's 23. I, I've checked. I recognize her. Yeah, she's a Disney. <laughs> okay, she's a she's Disney, a Disney. Lady. I'm shocked. I'm so out of touch with the Disneys these days. Yes. Okay, so she, uh, you go back to her place and, you know, you're getting it on, right? And you All take right. it down. Hot and heavy. And you see, like, right here, like on her pelvis, uh-huh. is a tattoo that says, Property of Jake uh, Walton. Oh my God, he's so cool. I love him so much. I'm always going to be his number one. And you're like, what's that? I don't even, I wouldn't even read it. Okay. But she's like, it's a tattoo that I'll never remove. Like it's, it it was a mistake, but like love this tattoo. You're not even permeating my give a Really? Not even close. You don't care? First of all, I wouldn't even read all of that. I would start reading it, be like property of, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) And then I would, and then if she was like, no, did you see my tattoo? It says, and then she would explain it She'd to me. She'd say, like, this is my ex, and like he's so special to me, and he's still in my life, and like I'll always love him. I'd be like, uh-huh. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but this isn't just like a one-time thing I'm saying. Deal breaker for like, like you're going to marry this girl. Yeah, I don't think I'd marry. Here's the thing. Okay. <laughs> it's going to, you should ask the other way around. Like, what's it going to take for me to marry them? Because okay. I have a hard time tolerating people long enough to even consider that part of it. So it's like, when you say deal breaker, I don't want to marry any of that. I'd fuck that girl. Yeah, yeah. I'm not asking if if you'd like one See, night stand this girl. But easy. yeah, so yeah. like, that's easy. It's it's very cut and dry for me. It's very hard for me to be like, yes, I'd marry this person versus I'd fuck them. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're they're literally polarized totally. opposites for me. So this is, would you marry them? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't marry them for a myriad of other reasons. Okay. The tattoo is probably like ninth on the list of why oh, okay. I would marry them. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, yeah. That wouldn't be the tipping of the scales. It wouldn't. <laughs> no. What about um, any Nadav? I mean, I, yeah, I had a girl that had a she had weirdo tatted down there, like a oh. like a fort, like trees and shit. It was weird as fuck, but it's like, yeah, by the time you're down there, I ain't reading okay. shit. I don't, I don't have time to read. Yeah, I don't fucking... <laughs> girls with tattoos. I love girls with tattoos. I've dated plenty of them. I've slept with plenty of them. I, I think it's hot. I don't give a fuck what's, what they are of. Like, that's what girls are always like. Don't ask me about my tattoos. You ever hear that shit? Yeah. And guys I'm like, don't do. worry. I'm never going to. I think it's different with guys and girls. Like, for me, that would be a deal breaker if a guy had property of blah blah of course, blah. Of course, yeah. I can understand why it would but be a guys deal breaker. Are, You're a sweet person. You I, guys don't have it doesn't it no. doesn't matter much. No, I'm like good. To you guys. I'm glad that he, you're <laughs> okay. his property and it doesn't say my fucking okay. name on that tattoo right now. 
then I'd be a little sketched out. That would freak me out. If it said okay. my name on there, if you were like, it says your name on the tattoo, I would have been like, okay. Oh, we that's need what to I should have said. It says record Josh Potter. Scratch. Yeah, that would make my dick soft immediately. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would not be able to handle that at all. Okay, that's I would get good a little Mr. Unlimited. And bail out of there, <laughs> you know, a little. Oh, oh murder. That's right. <laughs> But, uh, oh boy, those are fun. Any, uh, any last ones before we, we go? Did you have another one? Uh, yeah, let's see. Um, would it be a deal breaker if you go back to her place and she sleeps in a coffin? <laughs> that would be kind of hot, actually. It's like good for her back. Like she, <laughs> she. <laughs> what if she converts me? I'm like, man, I haven't slept this well in my fucking life. I need to get a coffin. <laughs> So you'd be into it. I think I'd give it a whirl. I don't know if I'd okay. be into it until I tried it. She'd make you'd have to sleep yeah, in that's the fine. coffin with her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And close, we close it. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it like a old school vampire coffin or like a real casket where it's like ivory and like you close it like caduce? Oh, I didn't padding. know there were differences between Well, you know, coffins. like there's the old school <laughs> there's like the uh, old timey coffin that's like wooden and that shape, you know, from Halloween. Mm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. Vampire and then there's coffin. like the ones that you buy for your actual grandma. I was thinking the wooden one, but whatever one, honestly, that you want. Because those ones look kind of cushy and nice. They've got oh, like, they do. They've got pillows in them. Oh, no, there's no pillows. This is hard. Just wood. Yeah, you're sleeping okay. on the wood. I mean, I'd give it a try, and I'd be like, "Whoa, you know, like we'll see how it goes." Like that first night of sleep will be indicative of if I can handle that or not. Uh huh. Okay. You know, but so I'm not going to write it, it off as. I'm going to be open-minded and say, well, sure, what, okay. Because she is the one. Like, she is so perfect in every other way. And if, say, I don't enjoy the coffin and she does, that just means we have separate beds. Yeah. Which is pretty awesome anyway. I'd be like, good night, babe. And I'd close her up. Look at that. Maybe lower her in the ground if she wants it. I'm going to make it my mission to find a deal breaker for you. (laughs) Good luck. Okay. (laughs) I'm pretty broken. Okay. We're going to find, we're going to find one. Good luck. It's like, yeah, she's, uh, she has, uh, she intimately cares for you. Is that, no, (laughs) I don't know. Something like that. (laughs) Could be one. But Chase O'Donnell, plug everything you have to plug one more time because, uh, it's been such a delight having you and it's been so fun having you in the studio having seeing anyone in the studio has been fun but seeing you especially thank has been you a i'm honestly so happy this was so fun uh go ahead and give me a follow on instagram that was chase underscore o'donnell and i pretty much post everything there that people need to see so and you'll be on the road with christina I'll here be on there. the road with christina so if you're going to We're see back. christina p anywhere live christina p online uh, is where you can get those tickets. Thank you're you're going to a better see Christina. plugger than me. Thank you. Ah, I'm just, <laughs> I was born in it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but go check out Christina's shows and you'll see Chase there. And uh, maybe you'll see her on uh, some other television Oh, things, you'll see right? me on Curb Your Enthusiasm next season. Oh, look at that. So yeah. keep your eyes peeled for Chase on You'll Curb. have to keep them peeled. Yeah, is it like one of those like, weep? Yeah, it's like really short. <laughs> okay, so get those pauses out. Get and- those pauses. And after I filmed it, the the AD texted me. He was like, congrats. Like, oh my God. You made it You're in. on the show. And then he's like, no promises. You'll make the cut. <laughs> so I'm here promoting me being on Curb. And there's a chance you, I literally won't even be It's in a it. fun Where's Waldo sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So keep your so- eyes peeled, folks, for that. You can find me. Uh, one place and one place only. That will be March 21st over at the West Palm Improv. Tickets for sale up on my Twitter at J underscore Potter, up on my Instagram at Josh underscore Potter and the West Palm Beach Improv's website. Uh, also, <sighs> what a treat. Yeah, I can't wait to go do a fucking show. Also, you can find me on twitch.tv slash Josh underscore Potter. It is how I kill time during this pandemic when I'm not doing shows. So I hope you join me on there at some point. Um, and finally, the merch. Please to be continuing to purchase the merch. We've sold out many a sizes of the shirt I'm wearing at the moment. I know. Roach. I tried to get it and it was only an XXL or something. Well, we've restocked and now they're some of them are out again. But, you know, we'll see how I it goes. Go, go back the on. The Sussel shirt's up there. The hat. The show shirt. We're looking to add to it, too. So keep going to store.ymhstudios.com dot com and doing that continue to rate review and subscribe on itunes because uh, that helps a great deal keep us up on the charts and if you've already done it do it again do it a third time what else you got going on it's fucking pandemic 
But other than that, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next Tuesday on The Josh Potter Show. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>